Say, who's that? It's us. You know something, George? I think we're dead. <laughs> oh, you naughty boy, to tickle me like that. What? <laughs> well, my husband will put a stop to this. I wish he would, really. meeting of the board of directors at 10.30 in the morning. Too many words, honey. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, let's see. It's 10 o'clock now. Ooh, yep. And it takes a half an hour to drive in. Yep. And the meeting at 10.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. That leaves 12 hours for, for a night of complete rest. Yeah. starts getting a night's rest? My pet, resting's the sort of thing you've got to work up to gradually. Oh, excuse me. It's very dangerous to rest all of a sudden. Come on, darling. Place the table when the curb is hurry. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Pet. Hello, Joe. I have a nice ring side table for you. Over there. Hi, right, Mac. Hello, George. Hello. Hello, Hello George. How are you? Hi. Thank Harry. Thank you, Mrs. Kirby. Hello, George. Get out! 
honey, you slide in and they carry you out. Oh, no. Right, where I go, you go. Oh, hey, wait for baby. Oh. Don't forget to write. George, is this 10.30 in the morning? Oh, this is Topper's Bank. No. Honey, do me a favor. Why? Shut my eyes. Oh, I'll shut your mouth. Good night, my pet. Good night. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, hello. You going to a costume ball? What do you think this is, an auto camp? Cross patch, cross patch. Come on, patch, get out of here now. You can't sleep here. I'm not sleeping. Talk to him about it. He seems to be doing it all. Oh, hush, Marion. Who have you dug up now? I didn't dig him up. He dug us up. Make him go away. I can't. It's a COP. Yeah. Oh, tell him we don't want any. Hey, hey, hey. Who flies? Come on, get out of here now. You can't sleep here. Well, uh, we're not sleeping. We're waiting. Waiting for what? For... for for the annual meeting of the board of directors of that there bank. Hold on there, hold on. There's nobody in there. Maybe they're late. Maybe they're late. You see, you can't argue with him. No, I can't, eh? Well, now I want to tell you something. See and what you can do with this instead. Well, of all... Oh! <gasps> Temper. Three, 
Do you realize that most men don't get chased out of the water like trained seals? Most men can dawdle in their shower. They can... You are not they... most men, sir. Why can't I be most men? Because you are Mr. Tupper, sir. And Mrs. Tupper insists. Four minutes past, sir. We dress now. Oh, we dress now, yes. Morning, Tara. Morning, dear. You're late. Oh, better late than never. Only 44 seconds, anyhow. Can't that fellow wait until I tell him what I want? Because you always have the same thing. Oh, I suppose in one morning I were to take a notion to battle a trout or some oatmeal or something. Where would we be then? But don't be silly. I've taken great pains to arrange your diet properly. You need sulfur. The eggs have sulfur. Don't dally, dear. James tells me you had to run for the train yesterday. I did. I ran fast, too. I caught the very last step. The very last step? Mm -hmm. Outrageous. What is outrageous about running for a train, dear? Lots of men do it. Yes, clerks and bookkeepers who come to the depot in a bus to catch the 745. But for the president of a bank to arrive in a limousine, to take the banker special, and then to run all over the platform like a, like a silly chicken. I didn't run like a silly chicken. I ran beautifully. Besides, you know how you puff when you run. Of course I puff. Everybody puffs. You puff yourself, Clara. I remember that Cosmo, day we... Cosmo, please. Don't be vulgar. Oh, sorry, dear. And I don't care if you are well-preserved for your age. You look anything but dignified when you run. And I won't have you climbing about the banker special all out of breath. 8.42, sir. Bye, dear. Bye. Don't run, dear. Take forty five, Mr. Topper. Uh -huh. I feel a million years old. You old? Why, you'll never grow old, Mr. Topper. No? I think you grow younger every year. I'd rather grow younger every day. Anything special this morning? No, but Mrs. Topper phoned me to be sure that you go to lunch promptly at 12. Did she tell you what I was to eat? No, oh, that's all right. I remember. The, the directors are all waiting in the boardroom. All of them? All except Mr. Kirby. He promised me faithfully. He's not here. I phoned his penthouse in their Long Island place. Neither of them had been home all night. I suppose not. we will probably have to get a detective to uh, locate him the way we did last year. If he should turn up, ask him please to come in and sign the minutes at least. <laughs> <laughs> My word. Fine place to sleep. Let's <laughs> leave. <laughs> Oh, 
Gentlemen, we will, as usual, conduct our annual meeting without the presence of our largest stockholder, Mr. Kirby. Weather clear, track fast. I made it. Meeting will please come to order. Very really gratifying to have you with us, Mr. Kirby. Hmm. I will read the annual statement which is ready for publication if approved by this board. And you, Mr. Kirby. Okay, shoot. Shoot, yeah. Cash on hand in the Federal Reserve Bank and due from banks and bankers, six hundred and sixty million two hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and sixty two dollars and ninety nine cents. Bullion abroad and in transit, thirteen million two hundred and two thousand eight hundred and fifty four dollars and no cents. No cents. I just said that, Mr. Kirby. So did I. Uh, <clears throat> continue. Acceptances, $47,501,324.36. Best own acceptances held for investment, $7,986,449.39, which totals $39,514,874.97. Well, no, just <laughs> Just hold the car, please. I'll be back in a couple of days. <laughs> Get a load of the fur bearing blah. Good morning, Mrs. Kirby. Good morning. If you're looking for your husband. Oh, no, I know where he is. In there gumming up the director's meeting. But if you should happen to see him looking for someone, remind him that it's me, will you? And tell him where I am. Oh, my goodness. She's gone into his private office. Liabilities, endorsement, on acceptances, and foreign bills. Three million fourteen thousand one hundred and forty two dollars and no cents. Deposits. One billion seven hundred and nine million six hundred and forty three thousand one hundred and twenty seven dollars and thirty nine cents. Liabilities. <coughs> Liabilities and also of acceptance in foreign outstanding checks. Thirty five million one hundred and sixty six thousand eight hundred and eighty three dollars and thirty six cents. Total one billion seven hundred and forty four million nine hundred and ten thousand ten dollars and seventy five cents. Balance two million eighty six million nine hundred and seventy eight thousand eight hundred and ten dollars and seventeen cents. Now, if you gentlemen agree, this report is satisfactory of publication. It can't be done. I beg your pardon. I don't understand why it can't be done. Look, try it. You try writing your name upside down and backwards without stopping. Come here. I move we adjourn. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Carried. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have a great deal of business on my desk that I wish to attend to at once. Moss covered bucket. Write your name backwards. Can't be done. No sense. One of George Kirby's a nitwit if ever I saw one and found him. Don't pst at me. Go ahead and pst at him. I think it's cute. Oh, I, I, I didn't know you were here. Oh, don't apologize. If you're confounding George, I think you're absolutely right. But you only have to put up with him once a year. Think of me. I have to live with him. And I guess I love it. Uh, please don't misunderstand. I, I, I like George. I'm, I, I'm very fond of him. And he's fond of you, too. In fact, we both are. Oh, no, 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 please, no. Uh, uh, that'll be all, Miss Johnson. Uh. You know, Topper, you were awfully silly not to come to our anniversary party. Mm -hmm. It was a swell one. Lasted for days. In fact, I think it's it might be still going on. <laughs> um, I, I bet it was fun, yeah. But, but, but Mrs., uh, Mrs. Topper it doesn't approve. She, I mean, we had another engagement. Oh, well, you, you understand, don't you? Yes, I'm uh. afraid I do. Why don't you stop being a mummy for a few minutes and come to life? Of course, there's nothing wrong in being a mummy if you had any fun getting that way, but... 
But I, I didn't, you see. No, I can tell that by the way you're staring at my knees. Well, I, I, I never stared at a, a knee in my life. That's probably just what's wrong with you. Because oh, I, I suppose I, I do envy the way you and George do things, but, but it would never do for, for me, for a man in my position. And then, as Mrs. Topper says... Ah, uh, as Mrs. Topper says. That's the situation in the box it came in. Oh. Now, oh, honey. Never mind, thanks, I found her. She's running the bank. Huh? George, look. What's the matter with him? Well, he's old enough to know what's the matter with him. Liabilities, no sense, assets. Topper, I know just the thing for the two of us. Where is it? But something's biting the man, eating him from inside. Maybe termites. What sort of a woman is Mrs. Topper? She... Don't she... tell me, I'll guess. Is she the horsey type? No. The tennis type? No. I know, she's the tin type. Arranges your diets, fixes your clothes, tells you what you'll eat and where you'll go, huh? Well, to a certain extent, yes. Hey, hey, hey where'd you I keep it? What? Keep what? The bottle, the bottle. Don't tell me there isn't a bottle around here. Of course there isn't a bottle. This is a business office. Listen, business is all right in this place, but don't you think that's carrying business a little too far? Come on, Marion, let's roll. Oh, no, I don't want to leave Top, but somehow I feel if I could pull him apart, I could put him together again, and he'd work much better. Catch. Oh. Topper, take my advice. Don't let him make a guinea pig out of you. You'll never be the same again. So long. Mrs. Kirby's handkerchief. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, thanks. I'm ready, Mr. Topper. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. H. Uh, Gregg and Company, 80 Milk Street, Boston, Mass. Yes, sir, yours of the ninth received and... Fascinating woman, Marion Kirby, isn't she? She reminds me of an Easter egg I had as a small boy. An Easter egg? Mm-hmm. One of those frosty ones, you know, with a peephole in it, you look through and saw an angel. <laughs> I wonder why Marion Kirby reminds me of an angel. Uh, yes. Uh, where were we? Maybe we'd better start over. And the angel was a blonde, too. Stuffed egg that runs it does. Mm, stuffed eggs, I love them. You never know what's in them until you take a bite. Well, take a bite out of the topper for me once and crack your teeth. Why do you love him so? Because he bores me stiff. He's like a nice successful sheep. Oh, don't say that. Topper has very interesting possibilities, maybe. Yeah, well, so is a sheep. It can be chops or hash and soup. Offhand, I'd say hash. Hash, topper? That fits, doesn't it, George? Offhand, I'd say, what are you talking about? You know, all mixed up. Huh? But all he needs is a little straightening out, and I can do it too. Can I, George? Yeah, listen, the last time you tried straightening a guy out, you cost me ten grand. Not this time, my foot's down. If you ask me, I'd say it was down too far. You know, he's skinned my eyebrows on the trees, that time. My pet, if you were driving the car, there wouldn't be any trees. You'd have plowed them up. Do you remember what happened to the last car we had? No, you drove it into a meat market. No, the one before that. Remember that far pass? George, look out! Something in your eye! Careful! Look out! You'll never make it, George! Oh, boy. I guess I'll never hear the last of this. Oh, look at my cock. Look at my hat. And I got a run in my stocking. Look at that. I told you to slow up, would you? Oh, no. Can I help it if a tire blows out? Besides, I had something in my eye. Couldn't have been your driving, could it? Say, I've come around that curve much faster, lots of times. So have you. Well, it was such a lovely car, too. Oh, George. Hmm? You're getting transparent. You're fading. 
Say, that's funny. I can see through you, too. Say, who's that? It's us. You know something, George? I think we're dead. I think you're right. It's funny, I don't feel any different. No, neither do I. Now I wonder what happened. I don't know. Well, I suppose pretty soon we'll hear trumpets and then off we go. I hope we go together, honey. And so do I. No trumpets. Oh, no trumpets. Marion, what do you suppose is the conventional thing to do now? I don't know. We've never been conventional. I think we tell someone our good deeds, and then they open up the beautiful gates and let us through. Yes, but what good deeds have you done? Oh, doesn't. Name one. Well, I've... Uh... Mm -hmm. I've, uh... Hey, what good deeds have you done? Well, I... Yeah, at least we haven't done any bad ones, honey. Yes, but that's not enough, and... and I'm afraid it's too late now. Yes. And I'm afraid that for once in our, uh... Well, for once we're stuck. George, maybe not. Hmm? Maybe if we could do a good deed now and... Oh, George, you're fading. Didn't you think the lamb was especially good? Yes, of course it was good. Why must we always have lamb on Sundays? You like lamb, don't you? Oh, yes, I like it, but couldn't we have it on some other day, say Tuesday or Thursday? We have beef on Tuesday, mm -hmm. boiled vegetables on Thursday. Oh, sparrows. Why do you use that silly word? Because you won't let me swear like a gentleman. Cosmo, what has come over you lately? You've been acting so strange and moody, not at all like your usual self. I don't know. Ever since the Kirby tragedy, I've been thinking. Tara, life is so very short, and we get so very little out of it. Don't you realize we're middle-aged? Yes, but why should we be middle-aged? After all, we're not so very much older than the Kirby's were. And look how carefree they were, how full of life. I can hardly realize they've gone. Poor George. Poor Marion. Poor Marion? Mm. Of course, I never saw her, but from what I've heard of her, she never thought of anything in her whole life except how to paint her pretty face and wag her figure about. Oh, yes, she did. She used to think about me. Oh, don't be foolish. <laughs> I shudder to think what kind of a ninny you'd make if you didn't have me to stop you. There's a man outside, sir. He wishes to see you about a... a contraption he's brought with him. Oh, yes, I know. Well, here she is, Mr. Topper. Huh. Just as good as the day she was bought. Here, I got a list of the things I've done to her. Uh -huh. Now, you see here, I'll put in a brand new front axle. Yeah. No use trying to repair them things. Well, it's something, isn't it? How much do you think we could uh, sell it for? Huh? Well, pretty hard to tell, Mr. Topper. It ain't like trying to sell just any car. Uh, you got to find the right party. I mean, someone who hasn't heard of the wreck. Yeah, that too. Some people are superstitious. But I, I mean somebody who who fit it, kind of. Well, what do you mean, fit it? Well, like, uh, well, take yourself. Uh, you could never own a car like this. No, I suppose not. But why couldn't I? Well, 
For one thing, uh, the missus, uh, she don't care for anything flashy, does she? Mrs. Topper runs the household and very efficiently, too. But when it comes to buying cars, of course, I, I never want to buy a car like this, but... If I did want to buy a car like this, I'd... Uh... I'd buy a car like this. How do I look? Hmm? Oh, you look swell, Mr. Topper. Uh, bet I do. I fit it, too. Fit it just like a kid glove, you know? Oh, for heaven's sake, Cosmo, what are you doing in that horrible contract? That horrible thing? Sitting in it, dear. Just sitting. Just sitting? You, you, you look like a what now? Well, of fact, I, I, I'm thinking of buying it. Buying it? Buying that, that, that circus wagon? Well, of all the absurd, Cosmo, you must be dithering. I thought it'd be fun to drive my own car. Weekends, anyway. Well, of course, I suppose you're old enough to know your own mind, but... Clara, we used to play together once, and we could again. We could, we could drive up to Lake Placid, just you and I. Stop at a roadhouse and dinner and dance and... Drive in that? You're asking me to drive in a car that looks like a painted Jezebel and drive in it to a roadhouse? What well, would be like going to the opera in my nightgown? Painted Jezebel, eh? So I'm a ditherer. Well, I'm jolly well going to dither them. <laughs> Would you mind getting off my wife's lap? Who said that? Ali, 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 Stop it, my nerves are jumping off already. Where are you? Hey, get off my foot. Yeah. Who are you? Where are you? I'm in no mood for this sort of thing. Come out in the open where I can see you. Toppy doesn't know us. Toppy doesn't know us. Mrs. Kirby, may I present Mr. Topper? How do you do, Mr. Topper? How, uh, how, how, how do you do? And this is Mr. Kirby, Mr. Topper. How, how do you... George and Mary and Kirby, why... It can't be. It, it mustn't be. It... It is. Oh, dear, dear. Topper's fainted. Get some water, Marion. Water. Come on, Topper. Oh! Oh, that's fine. You're a great help. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no. 
No, it can't be. It... No, 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 no. Uh -huh. You don't mind I'm going to get in my car and drive home? No, Topper. Sit down, Topper. You can't get in your car and drive home because you've got a flat tire. Besides, it isn't your car. It's ours. Well, uh, I'll, I'll walk. You can have the car. Mrs. Topper doesn't like the horrible thing anyway. Oh, George, did you uh, hear that? No. Mrs. Topper doesn't like the car. Ah, oh, good deed. Let's get to work on him. What do you mean, get to work on him? Never what, what, mind, Topper. Uh, why doesn't Mrs. Topper like the car? Well, she just plain doesn't like it at all. She often just plain doesn't like things. Now, uh, what kind of talk is that, Topper? She just plain doesn't like things. I refuse to say another word. I'm probably talking to myself anyway. Uh, like that. We find you fainting all over the place. We nurse you back to health and still you're complaining. I want to go home. No, Topper, you can't go home. Besides, George has to change the tire and he's very good at it too. Go ahead, honey. Mm. All right, I'll change the tire. But I'll be done if I'm going to waste any ectoplasm doing it. You see, Toppy, we only have a certain amount of ectoplasm to use to get visible. Naturally, we can't waste it, can we? Oh, of course not, of course not, no. Someone would wake me up. Now, nah, now, nah, Toppy, I won't bite you. Come on, let's sit over there by the tree and be comfortable. We might as well be comfortable while George works, don't you think so? Come on. Come on. You sit there and I'll relax here. Uh. You know, Toppy, you're a funny little fellow. You intrigued me. What you happened to buy our car? I bought it because I was mad. Who asked? Never mind. Yeah, 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 I know. Toppy had a fight with Mrs. Toppy. I did not. Come on, tell the girlfriend all about it. What girlfriend? Yours. Me. Say, you don't mind if I uh, save my energy and just become nothing for a while, do you? Well, I don't suppose I do. I don't know what you're talking about. Dematerializing. What? It works like a zipper. Z zip. Man, man, where are you? Right here. Huh? Oh. Well, look here. Make a noise every now and then, will you, so that I'll, I'll know what I'm talking to. Okay, I'll do this. Yeah. Right. Now, now, go on. Tell me about buying the car. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I just decided I'd buy it, you know. Well, I had a, an awful time with it at first, because I was going along, and a, and a great big truck came along and chased me off the road, and then a, and I was just getting over that when a huge bus came along, and. And, and chased me up the side of a hill like a mountain. Hey, watch out! Oh, I'm, I beg your pardon. Well, then, then I was going along peacefully, you know, and suddenly, bang! And I was uh, flat. I, I, uh, I, 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 just explaining something to a friend of mine. Well, is, it, is, it, is it my fault that there's no one here? Quiet. Hey, Marion, come out, come out, wherever you are, I've got an idea. And George has an idea, it is, generally speaking, an idea. Bring Topper along, we'll go places. No, I, I don't want to go places. Because I've been to places, lots of places, really I have. Oh, but not with us. It's different when you go places with us. Bring him along, Marion. We gotta have him. He's our good deed. Come on, Toppy. You drive, George. I'll sit in the middle. Come on, Topper, get in. Don't you think I'd better drive? It looks so crazy to other people if you drive. Oh, now, come on. Don't be a mess. Get in. Close your door, Topper.
with you. There was no one driving that car. Oh, you're crazy. I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. The car was driving itself. You ask me, so is this one. All right, I'll prove it for you. Well, you'll have to. I wish you'd stop this nonsense and let yourselves be seen or, or, or let me drive. Okay. Slide over. Now what have you got to say? I know an I'm like. <laughs> where, where, where am I taking you? You're not taking me. We're taking you. Mary, it's bad enough just being in the car with you two the way you are. Well, the way you are. Where are we going? Well, unless you've rented it to someone, we're going to our penthouse. Heaven. No, I haven't rented it. And we can have a drink. <laughs> George hasn't had a drink in days. It looks much better than he used to, don't you think? How oh, in heaven's name should I know? Hey, stop pushing. Don't push me. I didn't push you. And if I did push you, what of it? Oh, wise guy, huh? Like those crazy Kirby's. Crazy Kirby's, huh? Wise guy, eh? George, I wish you'd do something about yourself. You know, no idea how annoying it is to be out with someone you don't know where they are. Okay, my friend, anything to oblige. Here we are, Topper, the Kirby Camel. Barking, howling, and biting permissible. Come in. Oh, where, where, where's Marion? Got her room, I guess. You know how women are when they get home. They like to change clothes. Mazzarano, blither, blither. Well, Marion, what's the matter? You drink? I, I did once, but it wasn't much fun. Huh? Nobody noticed it. Made me dizzy, and I had to keep one eye shut. Oh, well. You had the floats. I like them. Make you feel nice and goofy. <clears throat> Maybe I do need a drink. Maybe I've needed a drink all these years and haven't known it. There we are. Hold it. Top of my pet. There you go. My wife objects to drink. And she shouldn't drink? She doesn't. And what's her objection? If, if my wife were to walk in here right now, I, I, I'd have to speak to her very sharply in order to keep her from making a row. Mm -hmm. Speak to her? Yes, I'd, I've never beaten her. Not yet, I haven't. Go oh, oh. open the other bottle. Crazy Kirby's, eh? Plush pup. Feel like dancing? Do I feel like what? Oh, George, you know what I mean. Dancing and singing. Say that again. Well, George, dancing, singing. Tra la la, tra la la, with a hey, nonny, nonny, and a woo, woo, woo. Relax, Topper, relax. Take a drink. Stop fidgeting. Well, do you mind if I just sat here and sort of sneak a little down with my feet? Cut it out, cut it out, will you? Oh. Well, if I just sat quietly here and, and felt like dancing, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Look, what is this dancing complex? Be careful. Would you mind if I just got up and danced around about on my tiptoe? All right. All right, if you must, go ahead, go ahead, but take it easy. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Copy, I think you got something there. Hit it. Chuck on down, Copy. Ha. Well, that's how I dance. How do you like it? Yeah, I thought that was pretty uh, bad. Ah, I'm glad you like my dancing, George. Look, I think I can learn how to live after all, you know? I, I can drink all right. Hmm. And I can dance fine. How well, about singing, hmm? Let's sing a little, eh? Yes, that's a good idea. Let's sing. Uh -huh. Oh, there she is, George. Where? Copper, you look like an owl. Come here, George. Huh? Yes, I'm afraid I must ask you to request your wife not to talk about me anymore. Use your influence. If you haven't any, beat her. <laughs> Come on down, Marion. All right. Honey. Oop. Oh. ta -ra! Topper, you did that on purpose. Nice going. I'm dreadfully sorry, George. I forgive you, Topper. Oh, oh nice forgiving, too. <laughs> Can we dance now? Why, certainly, that's what I got off my perch for. Mm -hmm. Oh, It's a fine thing, trying to steal my wife, eh? Well, I, I wouldn't think of such a thing. I, I, I don't think. Oh, Topper, I'm disappointed in you. Say, if I'm in the way, you folks can leave. Oh, not at all. Well, it might be nice of you to let me stay around. Hey, what's biting you? You're not getting jealous, are you? No, no, just getting careful. Say, listen. All I'm trying to do is to complete our little experiment. Yes, well, I don't know if I like it. Well, that's too bad. Grab a look at your little experiment now. Oh. We're really not being very fair to him. I don't think he, he knows how to drink. Oh, well, he only had a couple of glasses of wine. Yes, but I don't think he's ever had a drink in his life. Poor Topper. Poor Topper. Poor Topper. You keep out of this. Oh. Say, George, you know something? What? I think fate sent him to us. Yeah, well, I think we ought to send him right back. Oh, no. He looks like our last chance at a, at a good deed. That's how he looks to you. Well, look at him. His whole soul is crying out for self-expression. Is that the way a soul looks when it's crying out for self-expression? Maybe. Maybe Topper's soul. Anyway, all he needs is a little encouragement from us. Yes, dear. Well, if you really want to do him a good deed, get him some bromo while I go and change my clothes. Hold down the fort, honey, while I dissolve into a soup. George, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Where? Where what? The bromo, you know. Well, then give him some. Then you'll just have to have aspirin instead. Oh, never mind. Let it go. I'll be done in a minute. Hmm. It moved. We're fresh out of Bromo. All right, then. Put on your bonnet. We'll go down to the drugstore and get him some. Come on, Topper. See, Topper. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. Marion, come and hold him here while I get my hat. All right. Oh, George, quick! Trying to get away, huh? Come on, Topper. Just be. Don't drop him or you'll splash. Oh, no, no, Toppy. Relax, relax. Take it easy. There he goes again. Up to Daisy, Toppy. Say, George. What? We can't go down the lobby like this. We'll cause a riot. Faye. Okay. Don't teeter, Topper.
What's the matter with that man? What? What? Why doesn't he fall? What's the idea of stealing my elevator? We haven't got your elevator, silly. <laughs> I never will. <laughs> What do you mean by insulting a guest? Well, he was... You're fired! Thank you, Tommy. I'm gonna beehive in my stomach, but don't mention it. There's a bug now. Ask him what makes she a sin. Yeah, she's a beaut. So that's the baby you've been talking about. Boy, for my dough, she'd be a sense to handle. No gentleman will talk about a lady like that, and I demand an apology. You going to apologize? Ah, oh, you daffy. Oh, I left this for you. Attacking the whole gang. Well, he started it, but the other two helped him. What other two? Where are they? In there. Now, don't try to be funny. You, what happened? Well, that's right, officer. He started, then his two friends jumped in. What two friends? Where are they? They got in there. Yeah, and then the other two jumped out of the car, started slugging me. Oh, from no, no, wait a minute. Now then, what other two? Holy cats, they're gone. That's why they got in there. All right, all right. All right. Now, look, mister, maybe you can tell me what happened. Me? Yeah. I, I want to sing. Ooh, this one wants to sing. All right, Danny, come on, let's take them all in. Sit down there. People versus Cosmo Papa. Say, were you guys in the same fight with him? I'll say we were. Who is he? He's a big shot banker from Wall Street. But what'd he do? Well, for no reason at all, he hangs a haymaker on Eddie's kisser. You're charged with being drunk and disorderly, attacking a peaceful citizen, and inciting a riot. I'll tidy you up a little. Wash him off, George, while I fix his hanky. Okay. There are four serious... Huh. Just a nervous eccentricity, Your Honor. It, it sometimes gets the better of me. <clears throat> there are four serious charges here, Mr. Topper. I presume you wish to plead not guilty and tell your side of the story. On the contrary, Your Honor, I, I wish to plead guilty and get it over with. Well... <laughs> In that case, you leave me no alternative except to fine you $100. Why, that's outrageous. What's that? I, I said, where do you pay us? I, I mean, where do you pay it? Right there. Next page. But the dame, wow. The dame? What does yeah. she look like? Who is she? We don't know. A burlesque queen or something. Swell looking doll, but plenty tough. Next 
Is everything all right, Wilkins? I should say, sir, though it's not my place, that everything is quite all wrong. In fact, I might even go so far as to add that you have become a legend before your time. Yes, did, did, Mrs, Mrs. Topper heard about last night? Mrs. Topper, sir, has read about last night. Oh. It's four minutes past eight. I know, I know. We dress now. Get it over. Cosmo, I've been a good wife to you. I've helped you climb to the top in the business world. And I certainly raised you socially. I married you for better or for worse. And if you see fit to drag yourself and me in the gutter... Oh, Clara, please. Of course, you realize we'll have to face the world without any friends. No one with any self-respect will ever cross our threshold again. And you had to pick this particular time, too. Oh. Well, I, I don't understand just what you mean about, about this particular time. I had every good reason to believe that the Stuyvesants were going to ask us to their next big party. The Stuyvesants? Oh, of course, yes, I know. You, you wanted to be asked there for years. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry, Cosmo. What's it done is done. And I will do my part to save what little I can from the wreck you've made of our lives. 8.42, sir. Oh, so it is. <laughs> yes, madam? Is Miss Topper home? Whom shall I say is calling, please? Mrs. Rutherford Sarkin. Mrs. Ru... Mrs. Rutherford Stuyvesant. Oh, come in, madam. <laughs> Mrs. Rutherford Stuyvesant calling, madam. Mrs. Rutherford Stuyvesant. Mrs. Rutherford Stuyvesant. Oh, good gracious, Wilkins. You must be mistaken. No, madam. Shall I... Uh... Oh, oh, yes, of course. Mrs. Rutherford Stuyvesant. Well, so you're Mrs. Topper. I just dropped in to ask you and that delicious husband of yours to come to dinner next Friday night before our little dance. Why, we... Why, I... Oh, I do owe you an apology. I should have called on you years ago, but I didn't know whether you would approve of our little crowd. Approve? Oh, my dear. Well, you see, I understood you like to lead a quiet, simple life. But after reading about Mr. Topper's delightful escapade... Mrs. Goodrich and Mrs. Simpkins. Well. Hello, Grace. I saw your car outside and thought I'd just pop in. We've been so anxious to meet you, Mrs. Topper. I'm sure we must have a great deal in common. Thank you, I'm sure. How do you do? What a divine life our Mrs. Topper must live. She must have a thrill a minute. <laughs> Living with Mr. Topper must be like dancing on dynamite. <laughs> My goodness, that's not a very good picture of him. Oh, bless my blonde heart. I never expected Mousy to break out in this kind of a heat wave. Could uh, I borrow your lipstick? Sure. Thank you. Oh, dreaming it up, huh? Good morning, Mr. Topper. 
beautiful day, isn't it? No. Well, uh, yes, I'm out of my Good morning, Mr. Topper. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning, Mr. Topper. Good morning. What's the matter with you, Miss Johnson? Stop gaping at me. I'm not a monster, in spite of the papers. What's the matter with everybody? Respectable bankers like J.D. who ought to frown on me, slap me on the back and ask me if she has a friend. I, I can't understand it. <coughs> Take a letter, please. Mr. Wilson P. Hemingway, Carter Building, Buffalo, New York. Yes, sir. Your collateral is satisfactory and this corporation is prepared to finance your proposition 100%. It will, of course, be necessary for you to deposit the bond with us. <coughs> Stop goggling, Miss Johnson. To resume. <clears throat> I would suggest that you come to New York at your earliest convenience. <coughs> really, Miss Johnson, you seem to be staring at my hat as though you thought there was something dreadful the matter with it. I do. Yes, well, then I think perhaps you better take the day off, no? And do whatever you do do on your day off. Perhaps I better have. Yes. All right, George, you win. Well, I, I do think you might show a little respect for the bank. I... Push me. Where are you? What? Mary wants the soda. Oh, so it's you, Marion. After all the things you've done to me, you want me to buy your soda? Mm-hmm, the chocolate one. Don't you understand that this is my private office? But all I want is the chocolate soda with some vanilla ice cream in it. Why doesn't George buy you one? Because he's wandered off. Besides, he doesn't like sodas. And, Toppy, I'm lonely anyway. Haven't you any friends? None that I liked as well as you. Mm. Don't you do that again, ever. I'm supposing George are watching us. But he isn't. Well, how do I know he's not? You'll just have to take my word for it. Now, stop being difficult. Come on. Here's your hat. Here's your stick. Here's your gloves. Marion wants a nice... I know nothing. you want a chocolate soda with vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. Do I get it? Not for a million dollars. Oh, so you're going to be mean. All hmm? right. I can be just as stubborn as you are. I won't budge from here. I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll scream. You wouldn't dare. I wouldn't I, though? Hey! Oh, stop it. Mary, I'll do anything you like, but don't do that. All right, then. Come on. Well, shut that door. You can't go out like that. What would the people in the office think? Well, supposing I go out like this. All right, one. Shame on you, biting little children. Jack Robinson. Only don't say it for a few minutes. Don't talk. Someone will hear you. Don't look now, Toppy. But there's some lip rouge on your cheek. Huh? <laughs> this is delightful.
Man, what, what, what are you up to now? Here I am, Toppy. Oh. Man, you, you, you promised to be good and now look at you. Don't you dare go away without me. Oh, no, no, I didn't see anything unusual, no. Well, maybe it was the wind. Maybe you're right. Oh, yes. come on, oh, Cosmo, come right in here. For heaven's sake, what are you doing home at this time of day? I ran away. I, I mean, I, I thought it would be nice to feel how it would be to be here during the daytime, you know. I really can't understand these women. They... Sarah, but really. But Women like Mrs. Stuyvesant and Mrs. Goodrich, never before have they... You know, you could forget it if you wanted to. And if you really cared for me, there are a whole lot of things you could forget about. Forget? What yes. do you mean, forget? Well, I know that the, the newspapers said awful things about me and everything, but, you know, I'm not that sort of a man, really. I'm, I'm, I'm just an old, faithful dog, that's all. Uh-oh. Oh, I can't stand here and let you flaunt your infidelity in my face. But Clara... Don't speak, don't try to explain. It's all perfectly clear. But, but, but I bought them for you as a surprise. A surprise? It's a shock. Oh. No one, no one but a foreign woman would wear a thing like this. Oh, Cosmo. Clara, I'm so terribly sorry about those, about those things. I, please let me in, darling, won't you? Go away. Go away. Wicked old man. I beg your pardon, but are we packing? I'm packing. Are we going away, sir? I'm going away. Can't you even look like a human being? I don't know, sir. I've never tried. Well, you better try. No, sir. Why not? No. Better go back to the old way, I think. Oh. Yes, sir. And when shall I say you'll be back, sir? Say, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I am. I don't know anything. Oh, say anything that pops into your fat, stupid head. <laughs> and lo, the worm turns. Ah, well. I thought perhaps a cup of tea would help. That's very kind of you. I don't want any tea, Wilkins, and I won't be down for dinner. I, I couldn't bear the thought of facing him. Well, that won't be necessary, madam. Mr. Topper has gone. Gone? Gone where? He didn't know. He didn't know? But that's ridiculous. Nobody can go away and not know where they've gone. Nobody can. Wilkins, after all these years, are you trying to be funny? No, madam. Mr. Topper went with the suitcase in the contraption. Oh. <laughs> he left me. I'll never see him again. <laughs> oh, no, madam. He'll come back. If you'll pardon the liberty, madam, he'll come back just to find out whether you've missed him or not whilst he was away. They always do. But he mustn't know that, madam. 
<laughs> oh, what difference does it make even if he does come back? I can never hope to hold him. That woman, he, he doesn't want me anymore. He, he wants me. Did you say he wanted those letters? Yes, I, I did. Then why not let him have them? Oh, I don't, I don't mean just these things. I mean, oh, Wilkins, he's mad about the, the sort of creature who, the sort of woman who wears these things. But my dear, dear madam, might I suggest that you could so easily be the alluring sort of woman who wears those? Oh, confound it, madam, I still say if he wants the pants, let him have them. Oh, don't let's talk about it anymore. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of everything. Oh, Toppy, don't be mad at me. Where are we going? I don't know. I've left home. Doesn't matter where I go. Oh, then I tell you what let's do. Let's go to the Seabreeze Hotel. It's right on this road. Is it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We can swim and play and dance every night. There's a wonderful orchestra there. Oh, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Swim and play and dance every night. I bet it would. What am I talking about? I'm a married man. I can't go gallivanting off with a... Oh, with Toby, a... it'll be fun. Well, we won't go. I don't care, Marion. If you're here, I'm going to be very angry. In fact, I am angry now. I won't have you upsetting me all the time. Of course I'm here. You didn't suppose I'd leave my Toppy, did you? Careful. Here comes the bellboy. Take this bag, will you? Why are you staring at me like, like, uh, like something? I don't know what. Aren't you the guy that cost me my last job? Never saw you before in my life. funny about that guy? That guy ain't funny. He ain't even human. Well, I'll take charge of this. <laughs> Call for Miss Ward, please. Calling Miss Ward. How do you do? Huh? We have a nice room on the third floor. Third floor will do very nice, I think. Any floor. Take this gentleman to 314. Yes, sir. This way. Did you see what I saw? Did I see what, Sherlock? Anxious to get in the hotel room? I have a reason for being anxious to get into this room in a hurry. Well, I have a reason to get out of this room in a hurry. Come on, let me out. Come on. Here. Wait a minute. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Go on, get out. I want to shut the door. Go on. What's wrong with you? Between you and that guy in 314, you'll excuse me if I go nuts.
Mary. Mary, no, I do hope it isn't you. What did you say? I got here with this water running. I said, come out from under my shower. No use. I can't understand a word you're saying. Stop it, Mary, and we're being watched. We should fly out of the window and leave me alone. Oh, Marion, confound it. Use your common sense. I've already used my common sense. I've ordered cocktails. And you'd better jump in the shower and get yourself pretty. I wouldn't change my tie with you in the room. No, oh, Toppy, don't worry about me. Get into your dinner clothes. You're not dressed, are you? Yes, I am dressed. Well, get so that I can see you. So that I can keep track of you. How's this? You didn't have this on under the shower, did you? No, but I just decided to be dressed, and here I am. Now, you get dressed and hurry up. All right. Well, you sit here. Well, I can see you. And what am I supposed to do? Twiddle my thumb? Mr. Topper Holmes? Mr. Topper is not at home, sir. Are you sure? Am I sure? Why, certainly I'm sure, sir. Why shouldn't I be sure? Uh, I just wondered. You look to me like the kind of fellow who might not be sure. Mr. Tupper is not at home, sir. That's what I said. Wilkins, what is the matter? Oh. Uh, Mrs. Tupper? Mrs. Tupper, where's that mouse of a husband of yours? Mouse? Shall I eject this person, madam? Yes. Well, no. Uh, listen, Smiley, you stay out of this. Mrs. Tupper. I'm looking for that goofy husband of yours. I beg your pardon, sir, but I must ask you to be a little more careful with your language in front of Mrs. Tupper. Otherwise, I shall put the slug on you. No, no, don't be athletic. Where's your husband? <laughs> Where's your husband, Mrs. Topper? I don't know. Mr. Topper's gone away. Yes, well, it's just what I thought. What do you mean? Mrs. Topper, I'm looking for my wife, and I've got a certain sneaking suspicion that if I find Topper, I can find her too. You mean she might be with Cosmo? Uh, well, it's just possible. Listen, if you've got a slug of scotch, but I've got the jitters. Well, I'm sorry, but we've never had any stimulants in the house. Oh, it's a fine thing. Why don't you have a snort in the house for the poor man instead of lamb on Sunday, stew on Monday, beef on Wednesday? Oh. Why don't you go out dancing with him occasionally? Then he wouldn't have left you. Oh. I suppose you're right, but it's too late now. Oh, yeah. Please go, so you're breaking the madam's heart. Yeah. Well, if I can find Topper, I'll break his neck, and believe me, I'll find him. Oh. He's very handsome, isn't he? <laughs> Mrs. Topper, get me an aspirin. Well, of course. Wilkins, I'm not supposed to be the butler. You are. Oh, so I am. I'll get the aspirin myself. Come in. Mary, get out of yourself. Quick, someone's coming. Come in. What are you gaping at? Uh, can, can I hear you say, uh, g come in again? Don't be impertinent. Put those things down there. Well, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, get out. Did you look where I'm going? Yes, sir. No, uh, yes, yeah, no. So what's eating you? The next time I go to 314, I'm not going. 314? Yeah, the guy's spooky. I just brought him four cocktails. Four cocktails at one time for one guy? Well, one guy and two voices. What do you mean, two voices? Well, first he goes way down low like this, and then he talks way up high like a dame. Talks way up, <coughs> talks way up high like a dame? Well, get downstairs and get the manager. Get him up here right away. He don't need a manager. He needs a stranger. Hurry up. Well, don't scare me like that. You know I'm a bundle of nerves when I'm on duty. You sent for me, Casey. Yes, and I'm glad you finally got here. Why, what's wrong? Hey, you see the guy... Quiet. <laughs> I'm in charge here. Don't you understand? He's got a woman in there, and she's not registered. I'll attend to this. <clears throat> Who is it? I'm the hotel manager. Please open this door at once. Then it... I'm sorry, sir, but uh, 
I shall have to ask you and, uh, and the lady to give up your room. The lady? What lady? What lady? <clears throat> uh, perhaps you can explain the red on this cigarette. Yes, I cut my tongue when I was saving this morning. Cut your tongue? Mm -hmm. Listen, don't try to kid us. There's a woman in here. We heard her. Mm -hmm. She's gone. Uh, Casey, you're a fool. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Topper, to have caused you this uh, embarrassment. I, I hope you'll accept my apology. No, but think nothing of it. Promise me you'll think nothing of it. You've no idea how badly I should feel if you didn't promise me you were going to think nothing of it. Well, I am sorry. I, I hope you'll accept my humble apology. Why, the deal. I guess I'm sorry, too. Cuckoo. Uh, me, too. Oh, no, there you go. On. House detective, eh? A fine hash you've made of things. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't tell me that you hear two people laughing. Another mistake like this, and you'll be fired. Now, watch yourself. Come on, Toppy, I'm hungry. Let's get down to dinner. Uh, on an empty stomach? I want some more pink ladies. I'll get you some more pink ladies. Come on. It's a good thing no one saw us coming out of my room. Why, Toppy, I think we look lovely. We're the best dressed couple in this hallway. Well, let's, let's pretend we're not together. Pink ladies, and you could go on bringing it on and on. Yes, sir. Come here, I want to talk to you. Listen, what are you talking about? 
so burned up about? What about you up in Westchester? No, don't change the subject. What did you mean by that remark? You'll pardon us, but this is just an old family after dinner custom. Now listen, Marion. Oh, George, you're ruining our good deed. Yes. Yeah. Have a pink lady. Oh, I've had a pink lady and the place is with the good deed. I'd rather have you. Of course, of course. You stay out of this. Never mind, Happy. I'll meet you in the lobby. What's wrong here? You are. Take a walk. You can't talk that way to Shut me. Shut up! She's right. That's enough out of you. See here, young man. Where'd she go to? Never mind. You stay here like a good little billiken and I'll find her. Hey, where are you? Where'd you go to? Where are you? Either one of you. you watch what you're doing? I didn't do anything. Well, then watch yourself. Well, I've got enough to worry about. <laughs> what happened? I... Stop pushing me! I'll not stop pushing you because I didn't push you. No. Oh. Copper, you're going home to your wife where you belong. George, I won't be ordered about. You're going home. I am not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh. <laughs> oh, you naughty boy, to tickle me like that. What? <laughs> well, my husband will put a stop to this. I wish he would, really. Uh, here, where are you going? I quit. That guy from 314 is too much for me. Don't be silly. I'll have this rumpus straightened out before I can bat an eye. All right, you just stand here and bat your eyes. I'm going out and get a nice, quiet job in a nut factory. Sit down, Topper. I want to talk to you. I won't sit down. Oh, yes, you will. No, I will not. <laughs> Something a little odd about this hotel, don't you think? Oh. And uh, having a little chair trouble, but you pay no attention to it. reading. Where's Casey? I don't know. He wouldn't be any help anyway. Well, you go call the police before the whole hotel's wrecked. George, 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 this can't go on. It's got to stop. George. Oh, I beg your pardon. Did you drop this? You, you witch, you! Oh. Casey, get that wild man to my office before we lose every guest in the house. Right, I'll show him who he thinks we are. The manager wants to see you instantaneously. I don't want to see him. Now, don't evade the question. You're going to see him anyhow. George. 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 Uh-huh. I've been looking for you. What do you say we make up? Okay, honey. Hey, you know, this is the best fight we ever had. But look at poor Toppy. We've got to do something about him. <laughs> it's practically done. Get his bag in the car. All right, darling. that caused all this trouble, huh? I'm the house detective. I'm in charge here. Come on, get up. Here, hold this while I go for the cops. Hey, what is this? It's a dog. Are you trying to make a sap out of me? It's too late. Who said that? Did you say that? Of course not. That's what's wrong here. There's a phantom something or someone who's wrecking this hotel, and I want him caught. A phantom? <laughs> Who are you trying to kill? <laughs> Surround who? Who's giving? 
gentleman orders here. You folks watch the door. Come on, then. Follow me. Break the room. Quiet. Boo, boo, boo. Any man? We're closing in on him. Bread and butter. Bunch of cops you are. I had that guy right where he wanted me till you crossed him up. He's gone. He's gone. Sergeant, he's gone. He got into the automobile and drove away, but nobody was driving it. Oh, there must be an easier way to make a living than this. Stop squirming, Tom. What's the matter with you? I can't help it. I'm nervous. Look at that speedometer. What are you two trying to do? Make me like you? Can't help it, old boy. I'm scared stiff. Where are we going? I'm sorry, Copper. I don't know. All I'm doing, I've got to go there. Fast. Slow down. Fast, slow down. <laughs> I said you'd ruin me, and you have. Now you've done it. George, Marion, where are you? Uh, oh. Fine thing. Here we are again. <laughs> Once more around that curve, I won't have a hat left. Look at Topper. Now I care you too. He's all very well, but 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 look at me. I'm just like you now. Now keep your goddess on, Topper. You'll be all right. You're just a little unconscious. You're much too solid, Topper. I don't think you can become a member of our club yet. Well, I won't go back. Why not? I won't do it. You won't do what? I won't go back to that silly old routine, up at eight, bed at 11, lamb on Sundays. I won't do it. Oh, oh, oh Topper, don't be foolish. They won't make you do that again. I'd rather stay here with you and Marion, even though it is like living on the top of a volcano. Oh, but Topper, you've got to go back. You don't know how much it means to you. No, us. I won't. Oh, I won't. but no. Topper, you've got to go back, don't you? George! Drop it. Trumpets in an ambulance. Get back, Topper. No, I don't want to go. Well, I've got to go. I've got to go. But I'll get up when I feel like it in the morning, and I'll have some fun. Where were we? You've had an accident, but you're safe at home, and you're going to be all right. Oh. Where, where's Marion? I'll call Mrs. Topper right away. No, no, not Mrs. Topper. Marion. Who's Marion? Oh. Mm -hmm. She's probably someone I dreamed about when I was in the ether. But you didn't have any ether. Oh, yes, I did. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Your wife is very anxious to see you. Do you feel able to talk to her? Oh, you would bring that up. I'm all right. Go ahead and call her. I just want to get it over with. Mr. Topper is conscious and wishes to see you. Oh, is he really all right? He's perfectly fine. Oh. Madam. Why, Wilkins. Mm. See? Since I quit drinking, no more jitters. Well, I wish you'd sit down. You give me the jitters. What in the world are you trying to do anyway? Why aren't I practicing to be an angel? <laughs> Some angel you'll make. Hmm. Nice retorting. Well, I'm still your little angel, aren't I, honey? Oh, stop it. Well, aren't I? 
course you are. But don't say, aren't I? Okay, pet. Ain't I? <laughs> say, I do hope Mrs. Topper doesn't gum up our good deed. Well, we'll know in a minute. Hmm. Oh, darling, I was so afraid I was going to lose you. Oh, you can't lose a bad penny like me, you know. You're not a bad penny. You're just the dearest, sweetest husband a woman ever had. Darling, you, you amaze me. You look so differently and you, you act so differently. I am different. And I've been praying you'd come back so I could prove it. Will you promise not to laugh if I show you something? I promise. I'm, I'm too astonished to laugh. You do understand, don't you? Oh, darling, I understand why. I, I love you. Cosmo. Mm. But I wonder if you knew everything. If you knew. I don't want to know anything. I'm just going to love you and never question. <laughs> so long, Toppy. We're on our way. We won't be seeing you anymore, Toppy. So long. What was that? Yes. I thought I heard voices. No, remember, darling. Love me and never question. Mm. Bless our happy home. <laughs> <laughs>